Hey there, I'm Kara and I talk to wine. So today is all about breathing. Breathing and wine. So what does it mean when people say, I'm gonna let this wine breathe, we need to let this wine breathe, 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 breathe. What does it all mean? Uh, anyway, that was rather dramatic. Um, so essentially, letting a wine breathe means trying to incorporate as much oxygen to a wine as possible. And oxygen does two things to wine. It helps with the aromatics. So wine is made up of a bunch of chemical compounds. One of them, aromatic compounds. So oxygen helps break those down and aromatizes and brings more of those aromatics to your nose. So that will help you know develop more intriguing qualities in a wine when you're able to smell more because smell actually translates to flavor, right? So retronasal breathing, when you smell more, you actually end up tasting more and the wine gets immensely more interesting and pleasing. So that's number one. Number two, when you let a wine breathe, when you incorporate oxygen, it is going to change the texture and the feel of a wine along with those flavors and aromatics. So same kind of thing, phenolic compounds are another quality, another important you know, combination of chemicals in wine, that when oxygen hits them, they're doing the same kind of thing. They're changing because of that exposure to air, and you'll notice that perhaps with air, wine starts to feel a little bit more smooth because these phenolic compounds are helped to kind of soften and broken apart, okay? So those are our big key changes with air, and that's why people say, let's let this wine breathe. I need to let this wine breathe. Typically, the uh, letting wine breathe is used for tight, kind of more tannic, really burly, potentially young wines. So this is Chateau Boucassé. We're in Metrion with this one, and this is a combination of Cabernet Sauvignon, Tanat, and Cabernet Franc. So all three pretty tannic, burly, really strong, hearty grape varietals. That straight out of the bottle could be a little bit intense, not quite having a lot of nuance. This is a 2016, so not too, too young, but not too old either. And we're gonna explore this wine using three different ways. And at the end, maybe we'll discover what's fact, what's fiction about letting a wine breathe and maybe your go-to way to experience that evolution with wine and letting wine breathe, all right? So we have three ways. Number one is just straight out of the bottle, in the glass, and actually just manually swirling or exposing the wine to oxygen using your hand. So way number one, do, 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 do. so I'm really gonna give it uh, a really hearty, vigorous swirl because this is my way to get oxygen into the wine. So we're gonna do this for a couple seconds, really giving it our best and explore what the glass has to offer us. While I'm uh, swirling like a maniac, let's look at this device. So this is called an aerator. So essentially, there's a lot of technology out there to try to incorporate air dramatically and rapidly into wine. Essentially, this is funneling wine into um, a certain pour spout. So it's, it's funneling the wine in here when you pour, and it's just getting as much oxygen in the wine as possible. So this one happens to go, happens to go right like this, okay? So this is gonna be way number two. Let's go ahead and see that in action. So you'll hear, if you listen, okay, do you hear that? So that is the process, the technology, that's trying to, as you're pouring, incorporate as much air into the wine as possible using the air. Okay, that's way number two. And way number three is good old classic decanter. So you can use a decanter, whatever size or shape you want, and let wine hang out in here. It actually helps to funnel and target air gracefully into uh, any wine within. And I've let this sit for about an hour. So an hour is just, the right, is just the right amount of time to really start to see evolution from a decanter. So we'll try that as way number three. Let's just get right in there. Let's start tasting some wine because I'm gonna try to see if they smell different or they taste different or the overall feel is different based off of how I have let the wine. But in, but in, number one, just out the bottle, giving it a vigorous swirl. Ooh, super rustic, kind of more tart, pungent, black fruit, blue fruit. Almost like freshly turned dirt, so just this kind of dirt, earthy quality to the wine. Ooh, 
on the palette, almost a bit more licorice, but still that kind of irony, graphite, dirt, leather quality. It's quite astringent. It's quite grippy and bitter. So the tannins are certainly there. They're saying hello. I would not mind a piece of cheese with this wine. It's not uh, going down too, too easily, but really kind of a warm, strong finish as well. Interesting. Okay, that's number one. Number two, using that newfangled technology, the aerator that you can put on a bottle. Okay, I gotta say, maybe they have a little legitimacy here because I am getting more aroma. I'm getting more of like a dark chocolate. The fruits are a bit more ripe and robust. I'm getting a more diverse myriad. There's like a plum, blackberry, black cherry. The earthiness is not quite as packed dirt, but it's almost kind of like this foresty floor feel. Already, just by using this, I'm getting much more. So let's see if it changes the flavor or the texture. A little bit more softened. So not quite as tannic, not quite as grippy and, and pungent and astringent. A little bit of a softer, mellow finish getting a slightly greater presence across the palate as well. A clear start, middle, and end to the wine. Yeah, and the flavors are kind of mirroring the nose, a bit more flavorful. All right, that was, so right now, right now I'm kind of leaning toward this. Let's see what our classic decanter will do for us, okay? Ooh, I gotta say. Ooh, that's it right there. That is my favorite nose out of all of them. It's this myriad of licorice. There's baking spice. There's this touch of leather. There's cigar box. There's almost a dried fruit character. Ooh, yeah, that's nice. I, I really am enjoying the aromas on this one. Let's try flavor. I gotta say, overall, I'm getting much more depth of flavor. Longest finish of all of these devices. And to me, this just has the most lingering, kind of rich, generous, elegant feel. So I feel the wine started a little bit rustic, kind of burly, untamed. And this last one, the final decanting aeration, has given it the most elegant, sumptuous feel. So, end all be all. Give your wine an hour, nothing but time, right? Life is nothing but time. Invest in a decanter as expensive or as expensive as you would like. And just for wines like these, give them an hour. Enjoy kind of that beautiful transformation that comes using this more classic way to uh, let a wine breathe, okay? So join me next week as we check out more topics about wine, as we learn more about everything you might be curious about and I do look forward to seeing you next week. Cheers.